Good afternoon, Facebook community, uh, Spinnaker Property Management Facebook community. This is uh, Jennifer Noreen of Beyond Brand Collective, and I'm here with Mark Melsness at Spinnaker Property Management. Hello, Mark. Howdy. Hey, so uh, we had planned to spend some time talking about 2020 yeah. and um, wanted to move forward with that plan, talk a little bit about what we just kind of been through and where we see the business going, Spinnaker going, the market going. I'm interested, and I'm sure your audience is as well, in hearing uh, what you have to share about that, not just uh, relative to your business, but but you always have such great market insights too. So um, hello, Mark, good to see you. And uh, what do you have to say about what we just went through as the year 2020? Yeah, well, definitely a ride that none of us were actually prepared for. And I don't know that it was actually, at, at least industry-wise, as bad as we thought it was ever going to be. Yeah. You know, in the real estate realm, it couldn't have been stronger. Mm -hmm. We haven't had as strong a year than I can ever remember in all the decades that uh, I've been doing this. And in the residential management side of the real estate industry, it's just as strong. Now, what we had to deal with, which is, you know, the burning question is the, the COVID-related regulations from both the feds and from the state, and then working within those guidelines that we that were just made up to, to do the best that was could be done to, you know, put some uh, restrictions on evictions for non-payment when people didn't have money, and learning those and then learning the amendments to it and negotiating through it so that navigating through that so that we were one lawful and two providing service to both our clients renters and owners yeah yeah so it was a tricky balancing act to work with owners and residents with integrity and with good communication on both sides and <clears throat> not favoring either one but really doing your best to service both equally i'm sure that's a constant uh, challenge in your business even not in COVID and just even more in COVID. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I, it, it seems that maybe the need and the opportunity met. So it seems that there was a need for rent and there was a lot of community organizations that rose up to meet that need. And it looked like from my perspective that you, your company got put in the position of kind of marrying up those two, you know, those two things, the need yeah. for rent, but also, Hey, there's these generous people in the community, but I think for a period of time, the resources weren't getting used because there was a communication breakdown. And I'm not sure if there was an emotional difficult. I don't know. People go into a spin when there's hard things and, you know, people just weren't getting the help that was available. So I saw you and others just kind of step in to try and bridge that up, which helped both residents and owners. Right. So yep. it was yeah, interesting was, to watch. Yeah. What was, I think, integral with Spinnaker was we work very closely in our uh, owner operator associations. We also mm -hmm. work very closely with other landlords and housing providers that are both individuals and institutionals. And we work very closely with a lot of assistance programs, like the financial level assistance programs. Mm -hmm. And we work with a lot of advocacy groups, or not a lot, but with advocates to minimize homelessness through eviction of non-payment and renters' rights. So it really did get us on the front lines of not just knowing what the laws were temporarily through COVID from the governor or the feds, but actually the details of those and how to navigate through them like right now that best serve the renters so that they can stay and enjoy their home without the concern and the, the threat of eviction or you know, non-housing non and then yeah. the owners actually getting paid. And yeah, you know, well, you're on the ground with organizations like Landlord Liaison Program. Yep. Um, you know, second, uh, is it next chapter? You know, you're kind of in the weeds of serving people. And so I'm sure those organizations came into play, but you're also a leader in our community around homelessness and housing needs. So there's the more formal organizations. Um, there was one with the word justice in it. The Justice Center yep. is one that comes to mind. And I know United Way and just, I think a lot of the very formal uh, connections that you have and the informal kind of, I think those things all came into play. And um, and I know I saw too that Spinnaker just has a natural ability to communicate well with uh, residents and owners. And I think that 
what you were doing all along, just business as usual, came into play very much because now all of a sudden there was a crisis and those skills were really needed. And the, and the other thing is teamwork, you know, things that you do well are highlighted in crisis, right? So I think that there was some exceptional teamwork there as well. So, so yeah, good job. It was fun to watch on this side. I'm sure, I mean, it wasn't fun for the people suffering through all of it, but to watch it kind of move forward because of what you're describing was was pretty much a sight to see for sure. Yeah, after the looking back on 2020 and, you know, investigating the numbers as best we could, because at first we were tracking some data, but we weren't track tracking a lot of the smaller or what we thought was an important data at the time now would have been great because we just expected it was going to be a three, four, five, six month type of thing. Well, now it's going to be a year long. And right. um what we were able to come up with is, is that through our delinquency, which is rents not paid from March of 2020 to December 31st of 2020, we averaged about 2% of our 550 homes were in the status of non-payment, non-communication, non-moving. So really where the landlord was actually not getting paid and the renters were not moving out. That's a really small percentage over 550 units. Now, what we were also able to determine is that there was a lot of other homes that were at risk of losing their home, well, not losing their home, but they were unable to make rent, rent payments because they just were impacted financially through the COVID uh, epide epidemic. We were able to, we're, we don't know the exact numbers, but we know it's well over $100,000 that we were able to partner with assistance, financial assistance programs that continued to pay uh, month over month or a number of different renters that needed it at a one-time basis to continue to stay current with their rent. $100,000 just in our portfolio alone is, is an incredible number. And a lot of that was because, like you said, a lack of communication. The resources were there, and it was mm -hmm. only because we're embedded in all the different areas of our community, both right. on the provider side and the renter side and the assistant side, that we knew where to go and how to get the renters uh, in touch with them. So, yeah, and I think that is, I think that's the advantage of being in the weeds of your community. I mean, philanthropy is a wonderful thing and everyone should do it. But I think that we're all learning together that philanthropy is also very good for business because when things like this happen, you don't form a relationship with Landlord Liaison Program, you already have one. And so, and you know the person's kids and whatever. It's like, it's just so good for business to be out in the weeds of the needs of your community. And I think I've really seen that. Um, but I have a question for you. So. From the outside, I'm looking in at, let's say, the organizations helping are on the right and the, the Spinnaker property management of the world are on the left. Is the right, is that generosity and that volume of resources matching the needs of the property management companies or in, I mean, I'm talking global. So like, is this, is there a huge deficit between what is available and what is needed or is it really pretty equal and it's just a matter of getting the funds available? What is well, your, because I know at one point there was, we ran out, right? Remember at yeah. one point things got turned off. Well, wait a minute, don't take any more apps. Don't put that on the website because th that's all tapped out. But has that sort of smoothed over or kind of what's, from your perspective, what's the state of all of that? Well, it was definitely a progression through just experience because the first roll of cash that came out came through um right from the feds which was the uh, stimulus package right sure and, yeah. and then and then the unemployment that was yeah. the you know that'll get us through this first these months that we're going to have to deal with this and then once we realized it was going to be more than just a few months now that's when the fed stepped in and started their uh their their package that they rolled out to all the states and Washington State got it. I don't remember which month it was, but it was lagging. And, the, and we were starting to see a lot of people who were making it work now start to build some significant uh, delinquencies. And then once the money came available, we, know who, we knew who to talk to. We knew what documents to get. We knew how to direct our occupants and our renters to what websites to get that work done. 
And then we were notified electronically that they had actually completed their applications, knowing that we could communicate to the owners that it's coming. We just got to wait for it. And it came. Wow. Now, yeah, that's the, amazing. The yeah. unfortunate part is that there is still just a small percentage, 2%, that took no action, even though it was available for them. And the rest were just um, available to get that. Now, that money has now just dried up here at the end of the year. And, and it looked like we were actually getting pretty darn close, except for those historics, to keeping everybody pretty consistent. And now those are now starting to grow back up because at the end of the year and through the elections, there was some games between the parties on that package getting approved at whatever that was. Well, now it got approved. And Washington State's getting $550 million designated to pay rents for people impacted through the COVID um, uh, infection. So we don't know when that money is going to be available or where it's going to be. But I know that Spinnaker and our team is going to be one of the first to know and be able to set up our renters to have access to it. The new thing about it, which is really great, is that the governor's new proclamation actually now specifically says in some very uh, unclear areas. But this area is very clear. It says that the landlords, the housing providers can now apply in lieu of the renter for the assistance. So where we've had these historic, I'm not going to take any actions, we uh, have to take actions yeah. for them to get the money. Because for whatever reason, they're just not taking the action. And most of, most of the time, it's a pride conversation. And we, other landlords, housing providers can be pretty upset over that. Well, here, we're here to make sure that we can get the renters to be unworried about losing their homes and the landlord's pay. Yeah, so much more direct receipt of the funds that you need. Much more. That's a very different situation than it was when you're trying to figure out how to match residents up with the the money. So I have a question. So going back, you talked about the historics are catching up with you. What do you mean by that? Do you mean people that have sat in arrears for a long time? Yeah, when I say 2%, that is the people that in March and in April who have didn't pay their rents then there's 2% that have not paid it all any months between now and then. Uh -huh. So now there's that, there's that 2% and then there's that percentage of people that had uh, been impacted and went and got assistance and got current and, and maybe even go back for more assistance because they're still not getting the income that they need to pay the rents that they're, that they're in. And, and that is only another, I think 25% of our portfolio, Right. So in reality, far more than the majority, it's, it's a majority that are continuing to pay and exist in their homes just like um, they were before the COVID impacts. And do you think that's a common experience across Pierce County? Well, I'd like to think it is. We're, our homes are primarily the Tacoma, Pierce County area. And you know we're on all the perimeters of Pierce County, so I would say that we are a great cross section of all Pierce County areas. But we're only 550 homes, so it's a very small yeah. percentage of over 50,000 rental homes that are out there. Yeah, but do you think the pro other property managements, your your peer group, do you think they are having the same success? Yeah, you know I get a chance to talk to a lot of them, and they're they're frustrated. It just as much as anybody else can be. And sure. the other thing that we see is that, that most of those delinquencies are in the lower income, affordable housing areas, apartments. The single families, it's not so much. It does happen, but it's not nearly the, the concentration as it is in the affordable apartment realm. Yeah, got it. So where are we going then? So given all of that, here we are going into 2021. The... Um, the agreement, I can't remember the, the word, has been extended till March. Proclamation. What is in, the proclamation, thank you, it's such a formal word, has been extended to March. So there may still be residents who are facing that back debt coming into March because they haven't, like we've said over and over again, they're not excused their lease, but they're just extended. They're given an extension to pay. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you'll still be, even if once um, the proclamation lifts, 
you'll be working out agreements and reconciling things with your residents, right? Yeah, because we worked really hard to uh, go through the screening process and have them work with the criteria that we had at the time. Sure. Of the and they're good people. So right. we, we can to keep them in the home, especially if the funding is available and get the housing providers paid and the renters have peace of mind knowing that they're not going to lose their homes. Sure. So where is it going coming out of this then as far as your day-to-day -day business, do you think? is it? It's, it's a still a bit unknown. You know, we're still, I am very optimistic because that's just who I am. Sure. And uh, we're very rigorous. Thank you very much. <laughs> they have a lot of things in place to help us, you know, keep people in communication, even though they don't want to be. They still calls them to be in communication with us. Sure. We create that space that has them feel, you know, most of them comfortable to actually say, you know, listen, I mean, this is my problem I'm having. Oh, you're you're going to work with me to do that. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. That makes me feel so much better. Let sure. me see what I can do now. So the problem is, is that 550 million is not here yet. And it's not in any level of ability to disseminate out into the community yet. What also kind of had an impact on us is that unemployment is starting to dry up for people. And the stimulus that they came out with wasn't anything like they thought gonna make the impact on the housing, the paying the bills type of conversation. It's more of a, you know, buy some groceries and some fuel and um, take care of your family conversation. It's great. Sure. It just wasn't at the amount that we think that it would have made the difference for keeping people in housing. So when does that come out? Does it come out in January? We're pretty confident it will. I We haven't been given any instructions that it's going to, but hopefully they're, they're really uh, moving with velocity on that. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, if, the governor's plan for phase one to phase two now that that's out and very clear if these counties and these uh, consolidated counties can actually start to get to see some of these results to get into phase two and stay in phase two it's going to start opening up a lot of these service industry businesses which are going to bring back more people to work and sure. Start the cash flow again. It's going to take some time because just because they go to work in March or even April doesn't mean the cash starts in March or April. It's more like June, July. Sure. So, you know, if I had a crystal ball, sorry, I wouldn't be on this conversation right now. I'd be way out on an island in the middle of some tropical island yeah. in knowing the future. So, sure. But from our experience, the conversations I have with other people in the industry, professionals in the industry, that's what we expect to happen. And what's also really great, too, is those historic delinquents that haven't paid, we are now going to be able to proxy for them and get the payments in lieu of their non-action. And I'm not saying that in a just. just discouraging way it's just that they're not in action we can't make them go to the computer and fill out the application we can now for them so that's really going to yeah. start really so that will be resolved so they'll be no that's a good day so they'll be they'll be notified that that debt has been taken care of on their yeah. you know someone has done that for them wow that's incredible well it just it sounds like a good news story in the midst of really difficult times yeah. You know, it's just kind of amazing to me how uh, the generosity is amazing and then the ability, the abilities of the businesses like yours to accommodate has been amazing to watch. So so what else about uh, 2021? Do you think we'll be recovering from this going into the end of the year or the second part of the year? Yeah, well, what we saw here in even in um, the summer and then again in the fall of 2020, we saw a lot of uh, aggressive uh, people, people being aggressive in purchasing investment real estate, adding to their current portfolio and beginning in the industry or the investment of it. And one of the main drivers has been interest rates and interest rates are going to continue to stay low. They may tick up a little bit, but they're still going to be low in the threes. Yeah, so, wow. Yeah. And they're doing owner occupied stuff like a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex, and they can be in it. It's even going to be, I mean, it's going to be right in those numbers if they're investing it but not living. 
maybe in the four percent. Still, the 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 cheap rate to buy money to buy an investment right now is just the trigger to okay, let's do it now. Problem is, there's not a lot of inventory out there to buy right now, and the stuff that's out there right now, they're really proud of what they've got, and they're asking some pretty hefty numbers, and they're getting them. Right, because the rents are going up with the rates of the value of the supply land. and demand. Sure. So, so where before, when we saw material or properties that were like say a hundred thousand dollars a unit, now they're one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars a unit, which is a huge increase, seventy-five percent in a two or three-year period. Rents are staying with those. Right, the value goes up, rent goes up, value goes up, rent right. goes up. You sure. can still buy it at that price. And still make uh, some cash flow. And so, did I hear you say that there is a growth in invest the yes. a growth in the number of investors in the area? Yes. So the investments, the whole community has been pretty stable in their growth and shifting things around, and you know, selling things and buying things. But also, people have entered the market. Yes. What during was really the pandemic, specifically. Since but, March? Well, it, well it, I think it's the economy. And then we just didn't expect it because of the pandemic. We just more, we expected more people to hold sure. their air. No, they're actually aggressively pursuing. And in 2013, our number one need from our owner clients was, I need to move and I can't come to the table with twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 because I'm upside down on my house. What can sure. you help me out with? Our number one uh, request of our owner clients that are new to us are, hey, I got thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. What can I buy? And will you manage it for us? So it's a, it's a, a complete 180. And the housing, new housing builds are not keeping up with the migration that's coming into our state, sure. let alone our, our Puget Sound area. And the people that are coming in are wanting to buy and they are also wanting to rent. It's not just buy. So their needs are also not being met. So of course, if that continues, then we will still continue the demand for the home housing that we have. And right yeah. now vacancy is low, very low. So we sort of going into the pandemic, we're in a shortage of inventory and not enough places to buy. But now we're we have an, also have a shortage of places to rent, and it makes sense to me that there are a certain number of people that are wanting to rent because there's sort of a you know we're in the middle of an election and all the craziness going on, and you know what what direction is it all going to take? And I, it makes sense to me that there's also people just saying, hey, I'm just going to sit this out and invest later. So. Kind of makes sense, but so very interesting. So so come at, coming out of um, the proclamation, you'll still be kind of managing and working through the shift of um, how things have gone. But then also the economy just sounds like from a real estate perspective is really just doing very well and probably will continue to do well in the South Sound region. But also, um, I'm sure going into Seattle and um, the north uh, part of where we live here. So. Just kind of amazing. It, it, I think every time we've talked, we've commented how lucky we are to Very work in an industry that is doing so well when so many around us are struggling to have work and to be profitable. And, you know, it's just kind of amazing to me that um, that I get to work in and around this industry. And I'm sure you feel that gratefulness as well. It's kind of amazing. Yes. Yeah. I'm very, very. You almost good. feel like a Pollyanna. Like you don't want to say good news because people are going to think you're ignoring the good news. It's like, well, this is really what's happening. So, you know. Well, I, say, I want to share the good news because I'm just in lots of conversations about how tough 2020 has been and, and all the the uh, phrases and the the catchy things that people have to tell, talk about how bad it is. And here we are. We made it through and we're all alive. We're all very warm for the most part, staying dry. Yeah. And yeah. there are lots of people that need help. And um, well, lots of people are sharpening their online businesses too. So I've grown a little bit. It's been it's been you know a little interesting, but you know it's there's a lot of growth going on in my certain industries. Here I am in digital marketing. Here you are in property and real estate. 
certain yeah. industries have had growth and, and other industries have tanked completely. Brick and mortar has, they've had to shift how they do business altogether. And some of them have been profitable in that and some of them not so much, but it's not just a, a vanilla story. You can't just say, oh my gosh, I'm so glad 2020 is over. Well, yes and no, because, and I think that's typical. I think that, um, you know, the reading and the research I've done, that you know, that's really very typical of crisis. Um, you know, there's always, there's always losers and winners. And I, and I, I think that's traditional. So kind of expected, interesting to be a part of. So thanks, Mark. Always good to speak with you. Always good to hear your thoughts. And um, it'll be interesting to hear from you again as we go through this transition out, hopefully, yep. please, out of the proclamation in March. I think we all want things to go back to normal. And I'll be looking forward to your comments then as well. So uh, take care and we'll talk again. All right. Be well. Take care.